Welcome to another SME Media Webinar. Our topic today is 15 different ways you can expand stress relief capability. And our sponsor today is Bonal Technologies of Royal Oak, Michigan, USA. Hello, I'm your host, Alan Rooks, Editor-in-Chief of Manufacturing Engineering Magazine, which is published by SME Media. I'd like to introduce the presenters for today's webinar, Tom Hebel, President, and Greg Merritt, Vice President of Bonal Technologies. Tom has more than 45 years experience, and Greg has more than 30 years experience working with vibration stress relief technology and equipment development. During the presentation, you'll be able to ask questions using the Q&A box that appears below the presentation window. Time permitting, your questions will be answered following the presentation. If time runs out before we can get to all the questions, we'll make sure the answers are emailed to you. We couldn't run long and go past the top of the hour. If we do, we hope you can remain with us. If you can't, you'll receive an email later telling you how you can view the entire presentation. And if you experience any audio or visual difficulty during the live presentation, please let us know via the Q&A app. Also, if you have questions about any other aspects of our webinars, please email me at arooks at sme.org. So let's begin. Highly successful non-thermal stress relief processes allow, for, allow most companies to solve their most difficult distortion and cracking problems when manufacturing metal parts. This webinar will focus on how to minimize thermal stress problems before they occur, how to certify when stress relief is complete, no matter how large the part is, and 15 different ways to expand heat treat stress relief capability. And before I turn it over to Tom to start the presentation, let's, let's start with an audience poll question to learn about some of the issues you're facing. Question is, do you stress relieve metal parts? We'll give you about 30 seconds to mark your answer. All right, we'll uh, give you another 15 seconds or so, and then we will start leading with the presentation. We'll finish up your answers, and you'll be able to see the results as well. All right. Well, uh, Tom, why don't you take it away? Now we have our, uh, our, our poll done. Okay, thanks, Alan. Uh, and thanks for participating in that poll. Directly or indirectly, uh, we're gonna be responding to all of those, uh, all of your answers. Again, welcome to uh, the Bonnell Technologies webinar on what I believe it's gonna be one of the most exciting topics in the metalworking industry. The, uh, the topic is learn 15 different ways you can expand stress relief capability. Thanks for joining us. As Alan mentioned, I'm Tom Hebel and I'm here with Greg Merritt and together we'll do our best to make sure that this is one of the most valuable webinars you've ever attended. The metalworking industry is becoming more and more demanding, and most of us are caught right in the middle of it. The evidence of these growing demands can be seen in the changes to the requirements of most of the parts that you make. For example, nowadays you are required to deliver parts that, are, uh, that have tighter tolerances, or larger parts and smaller parts, and even more complex and intricate parts than ever before. And if the part happens to be the same, that is, without any changes, well, um, 
well, then you're expected to produce them at less cost or in less time. These demands are challenging or difficult to meet, and in some cases, they're impossible. So your new reality is this. To meet these new demands, you need to go beyond the natural limits of the technology that you have relied on in the past. The technology that Greg and I are going to be talking about today goes beyond the natural limits of the traditional heat treat stress relief process, yet without sacrificing quality or consistency of results. Regarding heat treat stress relief, we want to give credit where credit's due. For about 125 years, the heat treat industry has done a fabulous job in improving product quality of metal parts. The heat treat stress relief process in particular has been a valuable asset worldwide and it deserves to be considered the benchmark of all stress relief processes. However, as good as it is, the heat treat stress relief does have natural limits. Let me show you what I mean. This engine is being stress relieved. Imagine what would happen if this engine were to be heat treat stress relieved just as it is right now. Impossible. Literally impossible. And that's the point. But I want to make something really clear. We're not trying to muscle in on what you already use if what you're using is working for you. We're just introducing 15 different ways you can go beyond the limits that have stopped you in the past. The console and the force inducer that you see here uh, are two components of a product line that Bonnell developed to apply this technology. We call this technology Metalax for metal relaxation. Today's agenda is going to be uh, first, Greg is going to establish a baseline by talking about thermal stress. Second, Greg will explain how Metal X Processing certifies when a part is completely stress relieved. Once you know that, you can easily see how to certify any part, no matter how large the part is. Third, we'll be spending most of our time introducing the 15 different ways you can expand stress relief capability. Fourth, we'll have time for question and answers. And by the way, if you have a question or a difficult application, please submit it. We'll try to address as many of these things as we can. And finally, as we conclude, I have a bonus tip that I want to give you. It will definitely make your job a whole lot easier if you deal with hardened materials. With that, let me turn it over to Greg. Thank you, Tom. Hi, I am, I'm Greg Merritt, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, I'm sure we'll be going over some things that you most likely already know. So this should give you an idea of the markets we serve and what advantages we bring to them, which hopefully will be useful for you. Thermal stress. Thermal stress, as we all know, is in a metal component is caused by a sharp temperature drop during the manufacturing or the processing of the part. This stress can be caused by a number of things, welding, machining, grinding, forging, casting, hardening, etc. Meaning that the thermal stress is caused by any operation that induces a thermal shock in a part. Problems caused by thermal stress. Thermal stress can be caused by a lot of can cause a lot of problems for machine for the machinists and the welders. The major problems are distortion following machining, premature cracking of a part, resulting in failure, and delayed distortion of a workpiece. To minimize thermal stress problems before they occur, you need to figure out how to lessen that sharp temperature drop. For example, after a welder may be done welding, they place heat blankets over the weld as it cools. But when thermal stress is in your part, how do we remove it? There Current stress relief methods. There are many different ways to remove thermal stress. 
We have the heat tree. As Tom mentioned before, it's been the benchmark of stress relieving for the past 125 years. There's cryogenics, where you cycle the part 300 below zero and bring it back up. Natural aging, you can leave the part outside for up to two years. You have the stretching of aluminum, uh, compression of dyes, and lastly, subharmonic vibration, metal X. Uh, the metal X uses subharmonic vibration, not just vibration, because it's the only vibration stress relief method that achieves consistent, effective results. So the current stress relief methods, every one of these methods works very well for certain applications, but they all have natural limits. But they all have one thing in common. It's internal accelerated motion. So now we have what's metal axe, the definition of metal axe. This is metal axe is a patented process that relieves thermal stress in metal components by using non-destructive subharmonic vibrations. This is where metal axe can go beyond the limits of the, these processes and the thermal stress relief. It creates the internal accelerated motion by using the subharmonic energy, vibration energy, into the part instead of using the heat. So there's two principles in metal X. We know that all parts have a harmonic frequency to it. And if there is thermal stress in a part, that frequency is out of phase. So principle number one, finding that part's harmonic frequency and vibrate below it. And then principle number two of metal X is then the shifting and stabilization of that part's harmonic frequency. This, this re actually results in stress relief and stress relief certification. So here's principle number one, the subharmonic zone. This is showing that as metal X induces vibration into the part, it obtains a harmonic curve. Vibration is then applied below that harmonic peak in the subharmonic zone for usually 15 to 60 minutes, and that's depending upon the size, weight, and material of the part. Principle number two is the shifting. Principle number two, after the initial vibration time dwell, another scan is taken, to see if the curve has shifted. If the curve has shifted, it indicates that some stress relief has occurred. Vibration will then be applied for a second time period, usually five to 10 minutes, in the new subharmonic zone. And this is the finalization of principle number two, the shifting and repeating of that harmonic curve. You can see a third scan was taken, and if the third scan is in the same location as the second one, then stress relief is complete. If it's not, one would just vibrate for another five minutes until the last two scans repeat. Stress relief is complete. This is shown a close-up of the final two scans. You can see that they are in the same location. Certifying stress relief is complete. This certification sheet is a job that one of our customers metal X stress relief. The initial harmonic peak was about at 88. Vibration was applied in the subharmonic zone down around 73. The second peak shifted to 82, indicating that stress relief occurred. Vibration was applied for a second time period at about 70. The third scan repeated in the same place as the, as the second one did around 82 Earth, indicating that stress relief is complete. The good thing about metal X is that there is no size or weight limitation of a part that can be treated. Larger parts are just processed in 15-foot sections at the same time, at, at 15-foot sections at a time, the effective range of the metal X process. You will then get a certification sheet for each location that has been treated. So that concludes my part for now. I'll hand it back over to Tom, and he's going to get ready to talk about the 15 different ways you can expand your stress relief capability. Thanks, Greg. First application that we have um, actually comes from Bonnell Technologies. I uh, this, the 
the first way to expand stress relief capabilities uh, that I chose is on tubular weldments. And that's not because the tubular weldment is the most popular, most annoying, but this actually gives me an excellent way to introduce Bonnell uh, a little bit better. Bonnell uh, has been a, um, a machine shop and a fab shop. Our specialty over the years has been planer mill work. And at one point, we had the largest planer mill east of the Mississippi River. So it was pretty large, and uh, we're pr quite uh, proud of that. And uh, we were able to handle some huge amount of works, uh, work pieces over, over the years. Uh, and this environment is where the metal axe technology was discovered and developed. So today I've got three slides coming from Bonnell's own machine shop, but I wanted to give you the sense that we practice what we preach. I mean, we're not just talking about it with book knowledge here. We practice what we preach. And this is an excellent example that we can start with. This surface plate is a tubular construction weldment with tubes around the perimeter and cross sections, plus it has an inch thick top plate with two one inch thick rails on the bottom. And quite frankly, this would be a nightmare to heat treat stress relief due to the distortion. Uh, I know industry tries to have the heat treat uh, and it's just a nightmare for them. Um, but the reason why we stress relieve this was to prevent machine distortion. And as a matter of fact, Bonnell was able to achieve 86% less distortion than two other machining sources. That's the example that we had from Bonnell, but then let's uh, uh, go to the next slide, which is a, a non-Bonnell uh, tubular weldment. Uh, these structures right here are auto body carriers uh, that uh, a state fab did uh, made for General Motors. Uh, these auto body carriers actually hold the car frame while the car is being assembled. And the goal here, the real reason that they wanted stress relief was so that these frames would not distort over time. So that would, there would be no delayed distortion. Uh, they did not want the squeaks in the cars uh, on a finished product. Metal X was stress relieved uh, two of these frames at a time. So you can see one's uh, flipped over uh, and it's underneath the top one. So it, Metal X is being uh, treating two parts at the same time, taking about one and a half hour. The uh, customer liked this uh, Metal X process because there was no treatment distortion. They were still able to machine it nice and easily to uh, the tolerances. Plus, of course, they did not have the delayed distortion that they were mostly concerned about. The next, uh, the ne uh, second, the uh, second way you can expand uh, stress relief capability is while you wait. This example comes from NASA, which um, they were making the uh, deep. Space telescope. That's the Hubble telescope, and those. Uh, that's the, the telescope that make, takes those uh, nice pictures from uh, Mars. Anyway, they wanted to get this uh, aluminum cylinder as concentric as humanly possible. Previously, they had to send these cylinders out of state several times during manufacturing for a specialized uh, process. And the reason, obviously, they wanted to stress relieve is to uh, maintain machine stability. With Metal Axe, they were able to stress relieve these uh, cylinders less than an hour, and the parts never left the plant. They were able to save themselves over six months lead time on that one capability right there. <clears throat> The next example that we have is the third way to expand stress relief capability is on-site stress relief. This example is a main support truss for bridge. And as you can see, it's being stress relieved 
on location somewhere, uh, and uh, which actually makes uh, gives gives me an opportunity to talk about that. This uh, this equipment is powered by uh, 110 electricity, so you, you can actually run it off a generator anywhere you want to, uh, and that's what uh, they were doing. And the reason they were stress relieving this is to prevent premature cracking. There is a, a, a different kind of on-site stress relief. Uh, it's a different twist. It could be valuable to uh, many applications, and that just simply is stress relieving outdoors. Uh, this example right here is stress relieving cross tubes for a vibration screen deck that's used in the mining industry. And this is out in the storage uh, section of, uh, uh, of the company. And the reason they were stress relieving these cross tubes was to prevent premature cracking. And as a matter of fact, the result is that the company eliminated premature cracking in 600 cross tubes stretching over a four year period in the mining industry. So that definitely was taking some doing. Uh, the next example that we have is the fourth way that we can improve or expand stress relief capability is by improving quality. These barrels were seven inches in diameter and about seven feet long. And uh, the reason why I was able to improve quality is that Metal X was able to be applied much later in the manufacturing than the heat treat could have been. So nine barrels were being treated simultaneously. The tolerances were so tight that it led to normally a 50% scrap rate. Obviously the reason why they wanted to stress relieve is to control machine distortion. And with Metal X, as an added step, they were able to eliminate the 50% scrap rate. Okay, with that, let me turn it over to Greg. All right, thanks, Tom. So my next part on this is the fifth way to expand stress relief capability is treating non-ferrous anti-exotic metals without changing the mechanical properties. For example, these are aluminum uh, plates. They actually, they're a deep space impactor nicknamed an asteroid blast. Very ultra high precision, complex part. Just as the last slide, we're stress relieving multiple quantities at the same time. These only weighed a few pounds each. We have 10 housings on that stress relief table all at once. And actually, Metal Axe stress relief was specified on the print, and that print's from Drum and Aerospace. So, and the reason to stress relieve these were pre to prevent the machining distortion. They're obviously, in just right in between rough and finish machining, metal X stress relieve them, then they do the final machining and everything stays stable for them. The sixth way to expand stress relief capability is to treat large parts. This part is uh, much larger than that, that small asteroid blaster. It's a support for an aircraft elevator. This actually holds the platform that moves the fighter jet from one level up to the other level. Uh, this runs about 60 feet long, is about 30,000 pounds. And we had to stress relieve this in actually 12 different locations. And the reason to do that was to prevent the premature cracking in the wells. Another large part is, this is the six way, oops, the, the other large part is, um, is a huge crane with a real huge lifting capacity, and this was designed for a nuclear power plant. Um, this, was, this was actually manufactured by a local company here in the Detroit area, uh, and the reason they stress relieved this was to prevent, again, the premature cracking. The seventh way to expand stress relief capability is in stress relieving heavy parts. The mining industry is really brutal on a lot of their equipment, like this heavy bucket. We have quite a few customers that 
have this exact same application in a lot of different mines throughout the country and the world, actually. Uh, this part had multiple placements of the force inducer around the bucket to make sure that it was fully stress relieved. Uh, the reason that we stress relieved, or they stress relieved this, was to prevent the welds around the teeth from, from cracking. That is a big problem in the mining industry. And we've received ports, reports that many of these buckets are lasting two to three times as long before the weld was even, repair was even needed. This part is a, both heavy and large. This is a bulkhead, one of eight massive doors that was used in the Olmstead lock and dams. It was designed and approved uh, by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And again, metal axe was chosen to be the way to stress relieve this, this giant part. Uh, it's 480,000 pounds, approximately 30 feet wide, 80 feet long, and 12 feet high. Uh, in the very top left-hand corner, there's a yellow yellow dot that's actually the metal axe force inducer right up there by the ladder. Uh, this actually isn't the heaviest part we've ever stress relieved, though, but very large, very heavy. Um, the reason we stress relieved this was for the premature cracking, and it, it worked flawlessly for them. The eighth way to expand stress relief capability is treating a near net finish and semi finished part. This is an example of a part that's for the mold industry, for a mold for the automotive industry. It's being metal axe treated when it is only about a few thousandths away from finished size. The outer edge of it is actually already finished. So this would be something that is above the capability, above and beyond what the furnace could do. You can treat a part that is finished and semi-finished at the same time. And the reason the stress relieved this was to prevent machine distortion. It not only met the tolerances, but it actually doubled the existing mold life that they normally get. So I'm going to turn it back over to Tom, and he's going to work on number nine. Uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Gary. Uh, the, the ninth way to expand stress relief capability is treating finished or assembled parts. This example is a fully assembled fast fatigue die set. The die inserts, which are in the middle of this thing, uh, those inserts are what needs to be stress relieved. But stress relief, uh, but stress relief is taking place without taking the die set apart. There's no need to take it apart anymore. Uh, normally, these die, uh, die inserts would last, being fast fatigue, they would last about 70 to 75,000 shots before the whole, uh, uh, the whole setup would need to be replaced. Now, uh, AirTex is stress relieving every 20,000 shots. The reason uh, for stress relief is to prevent premature cracking, which the die casters call heat checking, and the results they've been able to triple the life of the uh, die life before the repair was needed. Okay, um, we'll go on to number 10. Number 10 is hardened materials. The 10th way to expand stress relief capability is by treating the hardened materials without altering or changing the hardness at all. These spindles actually carry the integrity of the entire grinder because they hold the grinding wheel. The spindles varied between three to five inches uh, in diameter on up to three to five feet long. Metal X was applied after hardening. And remember what Greg was saying is that a sharp temperature drop causes thermal stress. Your hardening definitely causes your thermal stress. So uh, Metal X was applied after that hardening. The reason why, of course, to uh, prevent grinding distortion. Now, this is interesting. They found, the customer found that they had two benefits, both of them quite valuable. And uh, uh, what they found is this. They were able to reduce the concentricity to one-seventh of what they used to get. Or they found they could get the normal tolerance 
in one-third less time. And that's because they didn't have to deal with a distortion. So either way, it, it was extremely beneficial to them. It's just a matter of uh, if they wanted to go all out to get the highest quality possible. The next example that we have is the, the 11th way to expand stress relief capability is uh, treating parts with differential thicknesses. This is the ex second example coming from Bonnell. Notice this right here. You've got a channel that has a quarter inch wall thickness or web thickness that's welded very close to a six to seven inch thick uh, block that needs to be stress relieved. To heat treat stress relief, this would be an absolute nightmare. The, uh, the result would be either severe distortion or partial stress relief uh, of, the, of the block. Yet it's just routine for, uh, for metal axe application. And of course, the, the uh, this, uh, reason why the stress relief is to prevent machine distortion. That was the previous example was from Bonnell, but I'll give you another one uh, not from Bonnell and not a Weldman. This part right here, this example is an impeller. And this impeller was uh, machined from a solid block of stainless steel, 15 inches thick. So the center's 15 inches, and the edges around the blades feathered down to three eighths of an inch thick. And on the bottom platform that you see there, right there towards the edge, it's about a half inch thick. Uh, metal axe stress relief was applied no problem, and they were able to machine to extremely close distortion control. Now, I'll turn it back over to Greg. All right, thank you, Tom. The twelfth way to expand stress relief capability is in treating dissimilar metals at the same time. Again, this is, goes above and beyond what the furnace has the capability of doing. Uh, just as in the previous example I had where you had uh, the part had was finished and some of the part still had machining yet to do. That, that, that can't be done in the oven. So this example is showing low carbon steel base which is finished and painted and that attached to that is the cast iron turret. The turret was semi-finished with the bores and faces yet to be finished. It took, a, it took the customer about one hour to stress relieve this, and the reason obviously was to prevent machining distortion. The results, they had four ten thousandths or less throughout the program, much better than they've ever seen in the past. The thirteenth way to expand stress relief capability is by treating structural towers, structural weldments. This is a tower that was for the U.S. Department of Energy. The tower was approximately 12 feet square by about 40 feet long. Uh, just as we had the aircraft elevator, this took about 12 force inducer placements to make sure that the, the entire part was stress relieved. And it was stress relieved to prevent premature cracking. And the 14th reason to, oops, the 14th way to expand stress relief capability is by treating stationary parts. This one is about 160,000 pounds, and it's a stamping press. We stress relieve the crown up at the top. Um, the weld was already performed, and so the crown was a post-weld stress relief. And metal axe is up there. You can see that the uh, equipment's way up at the top. And the reason to stress relief this was for premature cracking. And I'm going to turn it back over to Tom to finish up the 15th and final way. Thanks, Greg. And the 15th way to expand stress relief capabilities is to eliminate thermal stress while it is being induced. This is a, an example coming from Bonnell's own fab shop. Bonnell actually discovered and developed a process that we call weld conditioning. Metal axe weld conditioning 
is when you apply metal X stress relief during welding. In our developmental state, we wanted to eliminate the thermal stress as the thermal stress was being induced. Okay, obviously the welding induces the thermal stress, and so we thought, well, let's just try it during welding, see what happens. And what we found is that uh, after we got done welding, weld conditioning as, as it became known, and we stressed the, leaf, the parts later, what we found is that there was no shifting of the harmonic curve. No shifting meant that there was no thermal stress in the part. That meant that we could send those parts right to the machine shop, and we did. In this example, the rails were uh, welded to a uh, tubular um, structure, um, and we st stress relieved it throughout the welding, and the results were that we had 90% less than the, uh, the tolerance. Our customer, when we started working with the customer, customer said that those parts were the best in the history of their company. But, but also what we learned when we uh, applied metal X stress relief during the welding is that this process prevented most of the weld distortion and the weld cracking from occurring in the first place. That meant that the metal X weld conditioning Man, that opened up a whole new line of problem-solving solutions to the welding industry. Imagine any of the problems dealing with weld distortion or weld cracking, weld porosity, weld imperfections, so forth. Uh, this metal axe weld, condi weld conditioning process should be a very, very important consideration. Okay, now my last example uh, today is um, is also... Uh, applying the metal X stress relief, but during the welding. This example is for uh, General Motors. It, uh, it's going to be a checking fixture. Uh, it was machined on the one side, plus they put about 200 holes in there. Metal X was applied during the welding, which is what we call metal X weld conditioning. After the weld conditioning, they noticed that the fixture was 80% straighter than normal weld distortion. They found that they did not even need to straighten the part. The parts right from the weld conditioning step was half of what the straightening would have been, you know, the parts after the straightening process. And the straightening process was pretty complicated at that because it's tubing. Uh, they went to stress relieve it afterward. They found that there was no shifting, which meant that they could go right straight to the machine shop area, and they did. And their results were over the 15-foot length uh, of these weldments, they were getting one and a half thousands, which was 85% better than their tolerance. So there you have it. You have just learned 15 different ways you can expand stress relief capability. Before we go into our question and answer segment, Alan has another question for you. Alan? All right. Well, well gentlemen, thanks for a great presentation. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, we're going to do one more uh, uh, poll question before we get into Q&A. So let's get that poll question up, uh, and which is, which of the following examples have been of the most interest to you? And we'll give everyone about 45 seconds to make your selection. So uh, have at it. Well, you, you do need to scroll down to see all your options, so there are several options there.
All right, why don't we wrap this up and uh, move on to the results slide. And when that's up there, uh, Tom, why don't you give us your thoughts? Well, thanks. Uh, that's that's uh, great uh, input, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Um, lots of uh, lots of uh, challenges out there. Uh, we um, um, we're glad that we're able to uh, introduce a number of uh, solutions for you, and hope uh, we hope that many of them will be worthwhile. Now, Alan, let me uh, put it back to you. Uh, let's uh, get right into some uh, questions um, and challenging stress relief applications we can talk about. All right, that sounds good. Uh, so, Tom, uh, to start out with, uh, does Metalex or Metalex work on all metals? Good question. Um, Metalex, um, yeah, Metalex does not work on all all materials, but almost all of them. Uh, we estimate certainly about 95 to 98 percent of uh, of them that we work on. We actually have a um, a table here in the appendices that uh, would address that. Thought somebody might ask that question. But actually, let me address some of the ones, the materials that Metal X does not work on. Metal X does not work on severely cold work materials like cold rolled steel, rolled plate, stamping plates, things like that. Also, at this point, uh, we've, we, we've listed that copper is not consistent so some customers use it on copper with great success. Others do not have consistency, so we haven't identified that as a main line. But your low carbon, medium carbon, high strength, um, steel, stainless steel, aluminums, cast irons, et cetera, uh, just, you know, you name it, uh, except for the cold work stuff, that's, uh, it, it, it should be good. So uh, thanks. Good question. Well, great. Thanks for that answer, Tom. Uh, next question goes to Greg. Uh, how much does this equipment cost? Uh, thanks, thanks, Alan. Um, well, the equipment cost, depending on which model that we have, we it typically ranges from about fifteen thousand dollars minimum up to about thirty thousand dollars, mid thirty thousand dollar range. Um, I just put this slide up. You can see we have five different force inducer choices. And that's, that allows us to do the parts that you can put in the palm of your hand to these 480,000-pound 400, work pieces. Uh, so a force inducer selection is made, and then a council selection is made based on uh, how sophisticated you want to get in the documentation of the, uh, of the work piece. So we, it, we have something that's going to fit any, anybody's budget for sure. Thanks. Oh, terrific. Thanks for that. All right, our next question uh, is, during the welding processes, can the welder notice that the part is being vibrated? Oh, uh, uh, sure, I'll take it. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the welder definitely can notice. Uh, and what it is is uh, he feels that, um, I'm not a welder, so this is just comments that that has has come that have come to me. That is, they say that it seems like the weld metal is pulled in and spread out. It makes their job easier. For example, um, they can go into a corner, they can go vertical up, vertical down, around a circumference. Uh, I I saw a guy said, "Hey, hey, Tom, look at this," and he welded right on the edge, right on the edge of a part and then he put up a like a, a razor blade and then he was welding on the edge he says if I weld it it stayed the weld bead stays there without the metal X weld conditioning the weld bead just slow you know flows down the side he says this thing is just so much easier it's like a massaging effect to the weld metal it's nice and easy nice massaging effect it's not violent at all but it's very very effective good question thanks all right, great. I'll just keep uh, firing these away because we have a lot of questions. Um, it's uh, This question is, it's mentioned in the bulletin that Metal X does affect complete 
built engines, what does it do to achieve that result uh, or those results in particular? Oh, how about that? Oh, we do it. We do it just for gas mileage improvement. That's you know, uh, secondary benefit is just to make sure the engine lasts as long as possible. But uh, uh, if you're interested in doing that, we suggest it on a uh, a new engine uh, or one that's been just recently rebuilt. If you're a racer, um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the engine that you saw there that's a dyno test from Rouse Racing. Racing. Uh, yeah, they uh, they gave it the dyno test, and there was uh, uh, one of the engines that we had had a marked improvement on highway mileage, and that would make sense to us because the highway has a sharp temperature drop on the engine, and uh, we stress relieve the engine in between. Uh, we did a dyno test, stress relieve, put it back, and and we saw essentially we saw an 8.9% an improvement on highway mileage. So that was pretty good, but that's why we do it. Yeah. There's some, uh, and and that's actually why racers do it. Racers they actually uh, use use this on engine engine parts for longevity. They want to make sure that their parts just don't break during the race. So, good question. Thanks. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is also a racing uh, related question. Uh, Question is, would it work better attached to my fixture or attached to the chassis being built? Well, um, either or, and that's just going to you know, that's going to depend on the size and weight of the chassis and the part that you're actually welding. Most most of our customers, and we have quite a few customers that are actually chassis builders, uh, and a lot of them utilize the fixture. Typically, so they're going to put the the ch chassis on the fixture. They will select a proper force inducer for the size of the fixture and the chassis, and they will just metal X well condition the entire thing all at one time. Most of the time, our chassis builders are utilizing the metal X well conditioning application, so they can gain that added benefit of controlling the weld distortion, the weld crack, and get a getting a, a better improved weld, and then they're just going to get a better overall quality chassis at the end of it. So typically it's done on the chassis, but or on, on the fixture, but you, you can do it on the chassis as well. You would just use a smaller force inducer. I hope that answers this question. All right, good to know. Our next question is, uh, how does subharmonic stress relief work? What actually happens to the material to enable the stress relief? Good question. What happens is uh, that, that the answer here could go a long ways, but uh, I'll just be brief. <laughs> uh, what happens is that there's an imbalance on a uh, uh, you know subatomic level. Well, uh, on a granular level, there's uh, we suspect there's ions out of place, electrons out of place, rather. And uh, by shaking the metal one way or another, that accelerated motion, uh, that allows the electrons that are out of place to be uh, in place and thereby neutralizing the, uh, um, the effects of concentrated stress, okay? Uh, it may seem complicated, and it is, but you can see the, uh, an example just briefly. If you take socks out of the dryer, you know it clings together. Yet if you whip the socks, you don't feel, you don't witness that clinging together nearly as much. And so essentially that's what's going on with the stress relief. So if you heat a part to a high temperature, you get that internal action going on. Yet if you have the subharmonic vibration, you uh, get the stress relief going on too because of the accelerated motion. But in a short, brief uh, answer, I'm going to have to uh, go with that at this point. Sounds good. And we have time for one more question here uh, before we wrap up. And I will mention that all of your questions will be answered by email if they did not get asked during this presentation. Um, and our last question is, can stress relief be applied during the machining process? Um, no. <laughs> to answer that, that's during the machining process, no. Uh, 
the, it, it is the stress relieving, metal X stress relief is a preventative measure. We want to stress relief before the problem occurs, before your distortion occurs. So most of the time you're going to, you'll have, you'll have a part that at the end of it, they may have two or three machining steps, and at the end of it, their part distorts. So the customer may stress relieve the raw incoming material, stress relieve between rough and finish, and, and then maybe even after final finish machining, they would stress relieve it as well. And that's going to do that because you're going to stress a little bit before the, ch the challenge occurs. You can, when we use it during, is during welding. That's the application yeah. there, but not yeah. during machining. Yeah, during machining. Actually, we tried that uh, in the developmental time, and what we learned is that actually gave a, a rough finish. So that was actually counterproductive to the finish. So during the machining, not not advisable at all. Gotcha. Good question, though. Good all question. right. It is. All good questions, and there are some more that, like I said, we'll get to by email afterwards. Um, but, Tom, I believe uh, uh, you wanted to uh, provide us with a little bonus uh, after uh, our Q&A session. Oh, so yes, I do. I do. Hey, there's been a lot of great questions out there. Uh, yeah, thanks, Alan. Uh, there's been a lot of great questions out there, and um, we're going to respond to them. If we didn't get yours, we'll, we'll respond to them later. But before we wrap up the, the webinar, I want to give you a, a bonus tip that's going to be valuable, especially if you're working with the hardened materials. And the tip is this. When Bonnell was developing the Metal X process, we discovered that when we applied Metal X stress relief before hardening, before hardening, those same parts after hardening had, get this, 70% less distortion than the non-treated parts. 70%. 70% less distortion from hardening translates into a much more consistent, uniform depth of hardness after finished grinding, which then translates into longer service life from the hardened part. That was Bonnell's findings. Since then, machine tool builders as well as our racing industry customers have taken advantage of this application on parts such as uh, spindles and rotors and housings and various wear bars like what you see pictured here, and also crankshafts and camshafts for the race cars. And they have been very impressed with uh, their fatigue life improvement. Sometimes these parts would go uh, two to three times as long as, it, as, as they happened in the past. So if you want, uh, if you would like to get longer uh, life out of your hardened materials, well, now you know what to do to get it. So um, thanks very much. We've covered a lot of ground today. And as we conclude our time together, I'd like to recap uh, some of the key points of our discussion. We realize that you are under a lot of pressure today to deliver metal parts that go beyond the natural limits of the technology that you've relied on in the past. And the only way that you're going to meet these new demands is to find and use technology that can go beyond those limits. The Metal Act Stress Lift Technology provides a solution for 15 different areas that are beyond the limits of the past technology. You don't have to skip stress relief or be concerned with difficult stress relief applications anymore. The goal of Bonnell is to partner with you so you can meet every challenging or impossible stress relief application you have. To that end, if we can help you out in any way, let us know. This concludes our webinar. On behalf of uh, Greg and Alan and the whole Bonnell team, we thank you very much for joining us. Well, thanks, Tom. And I'll also mention to our audience that uh, the entire webinar will be available for replay by 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can access it by using the same sign-in link that you used earlier. Um, Thanks to everyone for joining us on this SME Media Webinar. We hope you found it informative 
and encourage you to sign into future SME media webinars. Have a great afternoon, everyone.